Good morning, people. Thank you very much for uh, your support of my little channel here and the efforts. Um, I understand that the circumstances are a little weird, being constrained now in format to short presentations. My uh, my style has to resemble much more that of a polemic rather than exposition. Um, but that's the way it is. Maybe that's good or whatever. Again, I, I appreciate the people who are constructively participating in this, and I invite anybody else to join in. Please subscribe and hit the notifications bell. That's all important. I know that some of you are having trouble getting your comments through. That's unfortunate. You will see in the notes here that I've made an attempt to create a Discord server that... Um, Hopefully we can explore some of this material in greater detail as peers. Uh, that would be fun. I know that it is surprising and it can start to smell perhaps a little Da Vinci Code-ish. But that shouldn't really surprise us as in a lot of ways the heritage that I am drawing upon here um, stems more from the somewhat obscure hermetic traditions in the West, which seem to be um, on the surface, you know, a minority position, but they were certainly not a minority position throughout history, especially among the intelligentsia. And I would argue that those views, which are contrary and heterodox to the conventional um, values of the church, values of the church is made distinct from the Christ gospel. I mean, the modern Christian Bible is a fabrication that is based upon the Christ gospel, but it is a construct deliberately created for the benefit of shoring up um, hierarchical power. It doesn't take too much investigation. In fact, you would find that if you were to compare the Christ teachings in, in the context of simply what was said there to a character perhaps as to our minds unconventional as Hermes Trismegistus you would find that there's a lot of similarity in the statements. Both of them are uh, messages of radical empowerment, autonomy, and the rest, like they are, in fact. And um, communicating the idea that the individual has a right, and in fact a responsibility, to steward the creative process through their own life, um, that they have an inherent sovereignty that they should explore to the greatest of their ability, well, that is a dangerous message. It is a dangerous message, and it is a message that, in fact, um, runs the risk of um, presenting real um, revolutionary change in the world. I, I think that it is a message that is essential at this moment. The dynamic by which we are conducting civilization is leading us down a path to civilizational collapse and in short order. I mean that's very clear. If there is a way out of this bottleneck it requires strong capable individuals that are able to relate to each other and relate to the universe in a healthy and constructive manner. It's a, it's a new way of facing our role as human beings in the universe and it's time that we embrace it. There is a especially profound meditation that I encountered somewhere and I cannot quote the source. Perhaps one of you um, could remind me of where it is, but it's a meditation 
that comes from the Hermetic tradition on the nature of God. And while I am not a religious person, uh, when we start dealing with issues such as sovereignty, empowerment, and freedom, we run quite quickly, even though these even though these uh, principles are practical, the language that uh, we're forced to use to oh, transact in them generally tends towards that which is religious in nature, so bear with me on that. But there is a uh, interesting meditation on the nature of God that goes like this. What would it be like to be all-knowing, all-powerful, you know, eternal. What would that experience be like? Is that something that can be comprehended? And from this um, particular view, the answer is yes. And not only yes, but the answer is quite clear. What it's like to be God like that is also infinitely lonely infinitely lonely because in fact for a given God type the purpose of existence is to exist purposely which is creatively and uh, that creativity is expressed through connection just like it is for you and this is why from the Hermetic tradition, your relationship to the divine is not one of uh, subservience or worshiping before some vast power, but rather you are God's brother and you are a co-participant in the creative process. And when we talk about manifesting God's will, that's your will as much as anyone else's. And as heady as that sounds, it's important to understand that I'm speaking here of the creed of Leibniz and of Newton and of Einstein and of Russell, right? Of Spinoza. This is uh, not a fringe idea, but it is a threatening idea. It is an idea that has not been commonly communicated to the average man much because it's dangerous but I think it's a view that is worth contemplating and perhaps timely and even for those of us who are inherently secular um, it is a view that can dovetail nicely even into a modern scientific even materialistic view should you choose to do so but I would say of the creeds that human beings have created throughout the human experience, there are few that are as liberating as this. I mean, with a little reflection, you find that most creeds are designed to enslave rather than set you free. Anyway, something to chew on. Um, I will provide a link to the Discord stuff, and hopefully, we can uh, find ourselves a uh, kind of a time frame that would work to uh, have some chats about this stuff, both the practical and the esoteric. And again, I really appreciate uh, the support of the channel. Thanks, guys.